Welcome back, humans! I'm back with another end of the week vent session. And before I get started, I'd appreciate it if y'all would hit that like button, smash that subscription, and turn on your notifications because I'm here twice a week. And for those of you that are new to the channel, uh, I'd like to let you know what a little bit about the channel. Like I said, I uh, get some trending news and uh, like to talk junk about you know what kind of trending news going on, dumb criminals, conspiracies. I like to do sports talk. I like to do fight talks. A lot of fight talks. I'm a fan of the fight game in all forms. You know what I'm saying? So I like to do a lot of things like that. So like I said, uh, people that are with me from the beginning, I appreciate you all for uh, all your support. And since you all been with me since the beginning and you all keep sticking around, I appreciate it. And for all you new viewers, welcome to the channel and welcome to Mint Event. Like I said, it's always going to be some different events. Um, and here we go. You know what I'm saying? But before I get started today, I want to start a little bit different. Um, I like to talk about energies and change, you know, um, because sometimes people are always trying to make themselves better, which is a good thing. You know, people are trying to some, a lot of people are trying to change. Some people aren't, some people like to stay where they're at and keep their own same little patterns every day. And some people don't like to change, but some people are changing and sometimes they don't, they get, um, stressed out, you know, because maybe they're trying something, maybe they're trying to follow their dreams or maybe they're trying to do something or try something new or create something different and. Um, like I said, spark something, spark some new energy going on, you know, so their energy is a little different. And, uh, sometimes they'll get a little, they'll get like some resistance from like outer, from the outer world because you're trying something different and you'll feel like it's like, and you'll take it as negativity or you'll take it as hate. Like somebody's hating on you or something like that. Right. Or somebody's trying just to bring you down, but that's not what it is, man. It's just, they don't know how to interpret your new energy. Because when you're trying to change and better yourself, your whole energy changes, like everything around you inside, from inside and out. And it starts to project on your outside, of your, you know, with the outside. It happens on the inside and then it projects down to the outside. It starts to break through and then you begin to change. Now your energy is changing all throughout. Now you're just, you know, whole new different energies. Now you're, you're a different energy because they say that's what we are. You know, we're energy. So now your energy is not modified. It's more like evolved. It's changing. And then the normal energies that you're used to being around come out to like where you, like I said, you would interpret it as negativity or hating or pushback or resistance. You know what I'm saying? That's basically what it is. It's more resistance, like an like electrical field. It's like a resistance. So this is what's happening. You know, you got this, uh, you know, you're trying to do things and your whole environment's used to you being a certain type of energy. And now your energy is different. It's vibrant different. It's vibrating different. It's, it's, it's echoing different. It's, it's resonating different. It's traveling. It's moving different. You know what I'm saying? It's carrying itself just in a different way. And some of the energies, like I said, that are in your normal environment don't know how to interpret that new shit. So that's where you get the resistance and the pushback. And sometimes you, you interpret that, like I said, as some negativity. So maybe it'll, it'll bring you down or maybe you lose confidence or a little bit of self-esteem because you don't want to continue that new energy. And some people will just get back and go back down to square one. Or some people will interpret that and just, you know, keep making them push harder. You know what I'm saying? Because it doesn't matter about the other, you know, regardless of that environment, you, your energy is changing regardless. You should just keep that energy on the path of it, what it was. You know what I'm saying? And know how to read those energies that are in your way. Like it could be, it could be like a weird way, a form, a form of negative energy coming your way where somebody would be like uh, coming up to you one day like, why, why are you doing that? Or why would you do this and that? You know what I'm saying? And you could be like, well, you know, you don't have to answer that question because your energy's on, you're on another path right now. You just keep doing your thing. Just like, I don't know, man. This is just the way I am. You know what I mean? And you just got to do the way, do the way it is. You know what I'm saying? Or this is who you are. Or this is what you do. And this is my thing. And. You just got to find a way to keep doing it, you know, because a lot of people, um, I think it be, it makes greatness. It may, it creates something great because, um, there's like people that became celebrities or big giant CEOs and running big companies and people who change the world, you know, or big crazy things, not even just changing the world, just doing some things of significance or doing some crazy bigger than what it was that they were doing before. You know what I'm saying? They all had to go through like this struggle, this one hard time struggle. You know what I'm saying? 
there's been old philosophers. I can't even say the guy's name right. It was like Frederick Nietzsche or Nietzsche. I don't know how you say his name. And I apologize for all you educated people out there that know who he is. And I'm, you know, misrepresenting his name. But anyways, you know, he even says there's a quote from him that I could read very well. And hopefully, you know, that's better than the way I pronounce his name. (laughs) But uh, it says no beautiful surfaces. There are no beautiful surfaces without terrible depths. Meaning a lot of people had to go through some lot of negative energies and things like that to get to, you know, the top of some sort or whatever the, you know, whatever the top may be for you. You know what I'm saying? So anybody out there, I just want to say anybody out there, you know, changing and making that change for the positive, uh, making yourself feel better. That's And then you got this negative things around you, which you think is hate or people just hating on you or these people trying to bring you down. It's not what it is, man. They just don't understand your energy right now because your energy is on the right. Your energy is on the rise. So I say continue that energy. Don't don't fight it. You know what I'm saying? It's not a negative energy. It's it's something good. And eventually they'll start to interpret that energy as what it is, as what it, it's coming to be. And I would say anybody out there changing for, for the better, whatever it is you're going through, where you need to make that change. Don't stop. There's always going to be roadblocks. If things were easy, they would just be the way. You know what I'm saying? And I didn't make that up. I've heard that in a movie. I've heard it like all kinds of places. You know, because if it was just easy, everybody would just go that way. And that's not the way it works. That's not the way things work. You know what I mean? If it ain't rough, it ain't right. You know what I'm saying? You got to go through things, uh, lessons, learn lessons. You know, And uh, but like I said, if you're out there making change, I got your back. You know what I'm saying? And I know there's a lot of people that support you, whether you think it's not there. And a lot of times where you think you don't have the support, is really when you do have some support. You probably had that low-key, super strong support. So keep your energies changing for the positive. And um, I'm sending my good vibes out to all of you. You know what I'm saying? Let's keep those energies evolving into whatever they might be. So shout out to everybody out there trying to make a change. You know? And um, I would like to get on with some vents. I'm going to start with a little fight talk because tonight are some good fights, man. Tonight is the night. You know, there's always a good fight Saturday night. Uh, You got some good boxing matches tonight, and you got some good UFC tonight. And man, oh, man, I got to get the boxing out of the way because the UFC is a big deal tonight. Not only is it a big, uh, you know, big deal for Israel, Adanza. I don't even know how to say his name. Man, I miss his name all the time. But (laughs) I apologize, but I I forget how you say his name. And uh, he's fighting uh, Vittori. Um, and, uh, it was a funny press conference when my man was yelling at him. His voice kept getting high pitched. The more yelling he get as like the louder he would get. His voice was like, woo, you know what I'm saying? Then he stands up like he was going to do something. And, uh, anyways, but let me get back to this boxing match real quick. Cause I got to get, I'll get back to the UFC. Cause like I said, that's a big deal tonight. So is boxing. Like I said, we got an up and comer, a new up and comer in the game. Uh, he goes by the name of Shakur Stevenson. This kid's a really good boxer, man. This kid's making making a real good name for himself. He's coming up. He's putting away fighters like he's supposed to be. And uh, my man's getting some, um, you know, some more credible opponents, you know, putting up on his table. And tonight, you know, he's going against, uh, Nak- I don't know how you could say his name too. It's like Nakathelia or Nakatia. I think you take the TH off. I think it's Nakatia. You know what I'm saying? So anyways, he's fighting him tonight. And um, Shakur Stevenson, man, this kid is really good. Like I said, and if you see him, he looks like he's like 16. He's just got this young kid face, but he's a real good um, boxer, man. He's developing really good skills at his young age. I think he's in his 20s. And um, he's uh, like I said, he's, he's coming up in the game. I think he looks really good, and I'm kind of liking him. Um, and um, he's favored to win tonight, of course, because he's you know the, the name right now. He's the name of the night. So he's coming up in boxing, and um, um, it's going to be exciting to see what he gets to do Like as, he gets, as his opponents get more – you know, well-known, like when he gets more bigger names and title shots, more in title shots. You know what I'm saying? Plus, next week, you know, you got big Teofimo Lopez, which I've been waiting for this damn fight. Thought it was going to be last weekend. Then it was this weekend. Now it's the next weekend. I don't even know, man. They keep moving this fucking fight. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> but anyway, the UFC 263 tonight. Oh, my goodness. Like I said, Israel Adanzia. I don't know how you say it. <laughs> like I said, versus uh, Marvin Vittori. You know what I'm saying? They're going on. That's like the main event. 
But man, oh man, everybody out there, Stockton fans, all y'all fans out there, the Diaz brothers fans, Nate Diaz coming back tonight. Man, he's going against Leon. Not only is he coming back, he's going against like against a really good dude. You know what I'm saying? It's not like Nate Diaz is just like, okay, I'm going to come back. And then he comes against like Conor McGregor. You know what I'm saying? He's like, all right, I'm coming back. Conor McGregor, pow. You know what I'm saying? Then those guys fight twice. And then he's like, oh, who am I going to fight nice? Next, Mazdaval, another badass dude. You know what I'm saying? Like, he just comes against big, tough-ass opponents, man. You know what I'm saying? Regardless if they stop the fight sooner, he, you know what I'm saying? Like, man, he just fights big dogs. Like, he just goes against – those guys are some brawling brothers. And I'm a fan of both of them dudes, man. But Nate Diaz has always been my favorite of the brothers. And uh, just because he's just the way he is. You know what I'm saying? They're the same, similar, but he's a little bit more, you know, edgy kind of dude. So he's making the comeback. It's a big deal. He looks in great shape. We'll see what he does. You know, he looked in great shape against Mazaval, but uh, Jorge Mazaval got the best of him. You know what I'm saying? And uh, we'll see what happens, man. Like I said, he looks in great shape. Those guys, him and his brother are always in shape. And he's older. He's The guy's a little younger than him. Uh, Leon Edwards is no joke either. Like I said, he's a really good fighter himself. And uh, But a lot of people, you know, like I said, I'm a big fan of these guys. He's like Nate Diaz, man. You almost got to like murder these guys to beat them. You know what I'm saying? Or tranquilize them maybe to beat them. Because these guys will be bloody as hell. Like, I mean, it would just be blood. It would just be like pints of blood coming out their face. Looking like a horror film. And these guys just will never quit. You got to like, they will never quit. Either you knock them out or you're going to tranquilize them. You ain't going to beat them guys any other way. You might submit them, but they, I don't even think they would even quit on that. You might just have to break their shit. You know what I'm saying? Because those guys just don't ever quit. They're like fucking Terminators. So I'm excited about this fight tonight because... That guy brings it all day. His, him and his brother just bring it. And uh, haven't seen his brother in any action lately. I've seen, I have seen him training with, like, I've seen him, ter- like, uh, doing a little grapple training with uh, Tyson Fury. Uh, that was kind of weird, and they were just big tie difference, and uh, they were just, you know, tr- you know, giving him some cool courses, crash course in the game. But, uh, man, Nate's back, and uh, I'm sure a lot of you fans out there that are fans of him are excited about it just like I am. And so I'm going to be tuned in. Um, like I said, it's not that much longer from now. You know what I'm saying? I might be doing some, uh, maybe some live coverage uh, pretty soon on some of these fights because, like I said, I do love me some fight talk. You know, I do love me the fight game. I love me some boxing. I like all the big events. And I love some UFC, man, because um, it's pretty fun. And the bare knuckle fighting has been kind of catching my, my eye a little bit more and more because, but it's just a little harder to watch because it's like just, man, dude, it's just crazy watching the bare skin doing it. So I kind of like that there's still a little glove when it comes to UFC. <laughs> but uh, Baron Uncle's kind of warming, warming up to me a little bit more. You know what I'm saying? But regardless, Nate Diaz tonight, Leon Edwards. They're not even the main event, but everybody's talking more about that than, than Israel's fight, even though Israel's the man right now. You know what I'm saying? But, I mean, it regard, him and Usman or whatever, like, I'm just saying, like, I'm, I'm, they're the, they're, he has to talk. Everybody wants to see how good he and what he looks like. So do I, and because I'm a fan of the dude. That guy always brings it. Those guys always bring, bring everything to that octagon. And uh, I just think it's going to be a great, entertaining fight. If you're a fight fan like myself, you are going to be excited about tonight. Those guys just never, never underestimate. Or, you know what I'm saying? They never underestimate. They always deliver, you know what I'm saying? So... Like I said, man, it's going to be a great night, great fight night. It's going to be some good action. Recommend you all tune in because I will be tuning in. And I do plan on doing some in the future. I don't know when I'm going to start doing it. But I think some of the fight nights I might just come out, you know, on the you know actual fight night after the episode even. Or, you know, I'll probably get the episode done and then probably just jump right on, you know, go live during the fight and do some uh, live streaming. You know, maybe on my Instagram or my other medias or maybe I'll just jump out on here too. Who knows? You know what I'm saying? Because I love me some fight games. And uh, it's like I'm always up watching them. You know what I'm saying? I can do the play-by-plays or whatever we can get away with without actually, you know, doing what we do. <laughs> we'll see what we can do. Maybe I'll wear some glasses <laughs> or some, some highly reflective eyewear. No, I'm just kidding. But, uh, yeah, like I said, man, I'm excited about tonight's fight. And uh, let me get on with some vents because I got to vent on some shit that's been uh, – getting on my nerves because i had to help some people out sometimes you got to help some people out sometimes you always do you know you're always that nice person you know or you're not always a nice person but there's sometimes you just you're not always that nice person and you go out of your way and try to be that nice person like you was fronting 
You know what I'm saying? Or maybe it's like, you know, he was like, I'm just going to try and be nice. You know, like you're changing your energy. Like I spoke earlier, you're trying to change your energy. You know what I'm saying? You're trying to be nicer or something different. (laughs) So, you know, you're trying to change. You're trying to be different and you want to be nice. So you offer a friend of yours in need that needs a ride to work all the time. And maybe you guys are like on the same way. Not only do you guys work together, maybe you work together. Maybe you don't. Maybe it's just on the same way, on the same route. And they're like, yeah, man, I got you. I'll hook you up, man. I'll pick you up. I'll give you that ride. You got, I got you, man. I got you. They're like, I'll offer you some gas. And I think if you offer the gas, then you can be like, oh, man, it's cool. Don't worry about it. But if you don't offer the gas, that's when I'm going to be like, you fucking asshole. You know what I'm saying? Like, if you don't offer, not even offer, you're just like, thanks for the ride, man. Like, you're welcome. And you just got to sit there like, shit's going up. Like, with this new press, gas is going up. Why is that? Why does this, like, all of a sudden, like, now it's a little expensive. We're just going to shut this down and make shit go up. You know what I'm saying? It's just crazy. Weird, but I'm not going to go on that part. But anyways, so you give them a ride. They just go, like, thank you. Okay, the first ride is cool. You give them a ride, they just say thanks. They don't offer you nothing. Like, oh man, when payday comes, I'm going to hook you up with some gas money, dog. I'm going to hook you up. Then you'll be like, don't worry about it. Because that was cool of you to offer. I understand you're in time of need. But you ain't even going to fucking sit there. You're just going to be like, thanks for the ride. Okay. So the first ride was cool. Second ride comes. And you're like, then the offer comes out. So then I'm like a little simmered down, right? I'm like, okay, okay. They were like, man, if I, you know, I can hook up with some gas money when I get some, man. I'm like, all right, cool, man. Don't even worry about it. Just when you can, you can. When you can, you can. My man, you when you can, you can. All right? <laughs> so the next one comes, and then it's like, I'm waiting out in the park. I'm waiting out there. And now you got me waiting. I'm almost late for where I got to be. You're usually right on time. And now I'm waiting. You know? Then you hop in and then there goes the offer's gone. Payday came around. You didn't fucking hook it up. I'm okay, okay. I'm going to let you, you know, you know, man up to your responsibilities. Maybe come out and say something. But it didn't ever happen. So the next time comes and I get the fucking finger in the doorway. I get the fucking hold up. I'll be out in one minute. I'm already running late. You're going to fucking come out and tell me you to wait. And I'm giving you a ride. You wouldn't give me no gas money, never. I'm like months on a ride. And you fucking, you're going to make me wait now. Now I'm like your chauffeur. Now I'm your Uber driver. And you're going to be like, hold on. Just, I'm not quite ready yet. That's what you don't do when somebody's giving you a ride. You just don't do that when somebody else is giving you a ride. That's messed up. That's like bad etiquette. You know what I'm saying? I think that's like rude, man. That's kind of rude. It comes, you're going out your way for a ride after a month. You never pass no gas money up. You know what I'm saying? Not only that, you're going to make them wait. Like, I think that's part is rude. You're going to fucking just make them wait when they're there for you to help you out. And you're going to make them wait to give you a ride to work, man. That's messed up. That's messed up on you. That's crazy. Like, oh, I'll be right there. Hold on. And if it's your ride, it'd be a whole different story. You'd be messing up my energy. Like when I spoke earlier about energy, you'd be fucking up my energy when you're like, hold on. I'll be sitting here like, yeah, I'm doing a good deed, helping this person out. Eventually, they're going to get a ride. Eventually, I might get some gas money. Who knows? And they're going to come out to the door and they're going to be like, hmm, hold on. What? And then my energy is going to be all messed up. I just want to just reverse and just take off on that ass. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm going to make up. You're going to get me mad as hell. I'm going to leave you. <laughs> for being so disrespectful I've, I've seen I've seen people that do that you know what I'm saying that was like you know you got them waiting after to give you a ride and you're just a friend and, or you know just a person that they met you at work they're not like a personal close friend and they got you waiting and like fuck this I ain't being late y'all be, you know what our point system's like you get that you know some places where you were at a factory once I was at a factory once and it was like you did like points if you was late or tired or missed work you get like points on certain type of shit of your attendance. You know what I'm saying? So if you was on a point, I'd be like, fuck, man, you know what the points is like. I'm out. Shoom. Looks like you're calling off because I'm fucking out of here. Or you're going to be late with some points because you're walking. You know what I'm saying? Because I ain't going to fuck around. 
I would probably do that. I've heard a lot of people just being like, fuck that, I'm out of here. You know what I'm saying? And uh, earlier today, I was at uh, my little, uh, my niece's uh, graduation party. You know, congratulations. You know, don't want to embarrass you out there, so I won't say your name. You know what I'm saying? But congratulations. Good job. You know, going to college, doing the thing. You know what I'm saying? Doing all that stuff. You know, proud of you. Happy for you. And uh, we were all having fun, doing some family things. And then a friend of ours was, you know, talking about, uh, you know, getting back in the dating game. You know, the dating game could be crazy. You know, I've been married for a long time, been together for a long time. But when we were younger, I mean, it's different, probably different, way different now. You hear from some of our friends and things like that. And um, the, the dating game could probably be crazy, especially if like, um, so why I bring it up is like the friends doing like the, the setups, you know, like the setup for the like almost like a blind, like set up the blind date. Like your friends playing matchmaker. You know what I mean? Like we're playing matchmaker here. You know what I mean? Like, and speaking of that, like back in the day, I played matchmaker once, I think. I kind of think I was responsible for a friend a friend of mine that's uh, married to his significant other today. You know what I'm saying? They got children and happily married today. You know what I'm saying? A long time ago, we, was at, we used to go to the club all the time. You know, we used to go dancing out there, hanging out at the club. You know, and he met a, you know, met a pretty lady and things had a great time and, you know, came home and had their fun and. You know, I got a knock on my door in the middle of the night, and the lady was like, she thought she was the booty call, man. She was all crying. The guy was like trying to, you know, you know, my friend was like, I guess he made her leave after he hit it. I guess he hit it and quit it and didn't even want to give her a ride home. I don't know. You know what I'm saying? We was young. He was young, young people back then. <laughs> so I get a knock in my apartment. <laughs> so I was like, what's going on? You know what I'm saying? And, um, uh, there was a girl out there crying and saying this and that, uh, saying that, uh, you know, I thought we had a great time. I thought we had a connection. I thought we had a connection. You know what I'm saying? And uh, I was like, oh, man, you know, and I have my girlfriend up with, with me. And uh, I'm like, oh, no, you know what I'm saying? Like, what do I do? So I'm like, I'm trying to think quick. I'm like, maybe he just didn't take it like that. Maybe he was just really drunk and didn't want you to see him throw up or something. You know, I'm like trying to make excuses, right? And she's like, oh, my God, he just treated me like so dirty, you know. And I'm like, oh, man. So I grab my phone. I call him up. And I'm like, yo, man, what's going on? There's this girl here. She's saying you did this. You did her dirty. You know what I'm saying? You just hit it. Now you pushed her out. You the one brought her all the way over here. And then now she's like out here, like just, you know, feeling all messed up, you know. And he was like, man, I don't know what you're talking about. And he hung up on me really fast, like click. I was like, oh. Like, what the fuck? You know what I'm saying? So I called him right back. And I'm like, yo, man. I'm, in, I'm right, like, right down. We lived in the same apartment complex, too, because we was homies, man. We was homies, like, way back, you know? So I was like, oh, it's like, hey, man. You know, I don't repeat the situation. And then it's like, look, this seems like a nice person. At least maybe you guys should at least talk things out, you know? And, you know, maybe some, you know, whatever, talk you guys out. Uh, maybe offer a ride home, maybe something like that, you know? I think you should try to write the situation here. So I kind of talked him off the ledge a little bit, you know, instead of him just, he hung up on me, like, whatever, click. I'm like, oh, shit, you know, but I pretend like I was still talking on the phone because she was all emotional and crying in front of me. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> she was all like, I'm like, yeah, man, that sounds like a great idea. I'll call you right back. So I hung up the phone and I said, uh, he's going to mull some things over and I'll call him right back. And I called back and then I talked him in. So I said, maybe you guys should talk it out. Right. <laughs> so then he goes in and uh, I guess she goes back to his place. They talk things out. I never hear anything. But the next day I go to sleep. You know, I get back up and uh, next time we go out, you know, they're together, you know, and then they come out and, you know, they're still together. And, you know, until this day, now those guys are married and they have a couple children and they're a happy family, man. So I feel like I played the matchmaker that day. You know what I'm saying? I could have played the I played the matchmaker that day. I felt like because otherwise, you know, she would have just could have just I could have been like, look, man, you was the booty call, go home. You know what I'm saying? And who knows what have happened that day if you guys would have never. And and they were such a close couple and so like they like the same club songs. Like I remember we'd be at work, we even like we'd be at work and shit or hanging out. You know what I'm saying? And he'd be driving his ride and he always had a cool nice ride and play some cool music. You know he always had some cool music going, and and they would have the same like club song. 
like I uh, playlist almost. It was like you heard their favorite song when they were together, and then he'd be in the ride playing the same songs. That's when you knew they had like the connection. You know what I'm saying? So it was cool, man. I'm like happy for them. You know what I'm saying? Because you just never know what could happen if it would have went the other way. Like almost like one of those parallel universe type things. If like one little thing changed in history, it could affect the whole future. You know what I'm saying? And uh, what if that didn't happen? Like what if it was like you was just a booty call, get out of here. And they never just, the future just never happened that they have today. Could have been a whole different, like um, um, another story, you know. But they, we were talking about that, you know. They say, like, uh, earlier today about matchmaking. You know, you could be the matchmaker or, you you know, friends set friends up with someone we think is a nice girl, a nice woman, nice nice gentleman or whatever. And uh, you want to see what happens, you know. if they, Maybe they become a nice couple, you know what I mean? So, so we're talking about this and they said, you know, their friends set them up with a, you know, so-and-so and they went out to the date. The guy seemed real cool. Second date, the weirdness came out. <laughs> okay. So that's when you're like, you know, you still got to go see your friends. And it happens to be like, let's say it was a husband and wife, you know, did it was a friend of the husband he works with, you know, you know, stood and vouched for the guy. The guy's real cool. They hung out before all that. They hang out and drink beers all the time. But he probably didn't know the guy as much as well as he thought. Now, I'm going to exaggerate a little bit, but let's just say, like, the man had, like, a leather fetish or something, you know? And it's your second date, and my man shows up in, like, crazy chaps with his cheeks out and a dog leash or something. And he expects you to hang out. And you're like, hold up. That's some fifth date shit, you know what I'm saying, or something like that. Like, we ain't there yet, you know what I'm saying? And he comes out to that weird, and it's all, and then you got to go back. And face your friends because you were the ones who set them up. You know, you set them up so you got to sit there and deal with uh, what you just did. So you're like, you know, how awkward would that be when you come out and you're the guy. Well, you know, it's going to be awkward both sides because you also, you, your friend didn't know you were the crazy leather guy. Even when you guys would go out and get some wings and beer or some shit. Right. So that's going to be awkward for you. Like, damn, I didn't tell him about that. You know, I should have did that part. Right. Shouldn't have came over, you know, shouldn't have, should have told him about the leather face masks and the fucking, you know, the fetish. You know, should have brought that up maybe. You know, maybe one of those times when we were hammered. So you got to go back and face that part. And then your friends that, you know, got to face your other friend, the woman that you guys hooked him up with or whoever you hooked him up with, whoever it was, man, woman, whatever. And, um, uh, yeah, so... Now you got to face them too because you're like, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry, I didn't know this and that, and then you got to face that shit, you know. And then you got those barbecues, and then you got, or then they go back to their friends, or like, look at these guys set me up with some crazy ass dude. Who knows what this couple's into? Now she's gonna think you're all into that leather shit because you introduced her to the crazy leather guy, you know, leather pants, you know, not leather face. Well, he probably had that fucking weird mask on since he wore a dog leash or whatever the fuck. But leather pants, you know what I'm saying? You introduced him to leather fucking leather man. And fucking, <laughs> and you got to deal with it now, you know, and be some awkward shit. And then leather man's got to deal with his homie back at work. You know, like, man, I vouched for you. And you came out there fucking leather pants, assed out, dog leash. And he was like, did she fucking still take you for a walk? <laughs> that would be the real question that I want to know. So, I got a local story for you guys here in Michigan. A 27-year-old woman from Ann Arbor, I won't uh, drop the name here, but eventually um, she needed the jaws of life to help her from her home. I don't know if it was her home or her boyfriend's home, or I don't, I don't think she was married. I think it was her boyfriend or fiancé, who knows. But apparently she needed the jaws of life to enter her home to help her free her from a certain situation. Now, I know you're wondering what situation this may be. If you're from here, you probably already know. This woman was trying a new uh, sexual experiment or a sex experiment, I guess you could say, with her and her significant other. And it involved a folding chair, a steel chair of some sort that, you know, not like a cheap folding chair, but it was some sort of chair that folds. And apparently they were doing some freaky shit with it. So it, it involved her getting, I think, her body into the chair frame of some sort, you know, for positioning of, 
I don't know what, lifting things or moving some things. I don't know what. But then she got stuck. And it got to became a problem. It got serious. The panic set in to where they had to call 911. First responders come in. They needed the jaws of life to cut her free. So this is where I come in, you know what I'm saying? Like all you people out there experimenting and your energy is evolving. <laughs> we got to think things through, plan things out a little better. Maybe have like the escape plan. You know how some people had those safe words. Have an escape plan ready in case you, you know, this and that. Like know how to take the chair apart maybe if you're going to use that chair. You know, if this screws loose, maybe we can help you out in case of emergency. Or if you're going to try something outrageous, you know, that way you're more prepared. That's all I'm saying. Because, geez, things are getting crazier and crazier, it seems like. So that was a local person, you know, getting their sex experiment on and, then, you know, had to bring other people up. And I wonder how embarrassing that'd be when the, the firemen come because they want to know what you guys were doing i mean if you're dressed and stuff you could probably pull it off but if you're naked in a sexual position or you're stuck in the chair with your booty out or whatever's out you know all your stuff out <laughs> all your unmentionables are all not so unmentionable anymore you know they gotta come save you that's really awkward and then i couldn't you know um uh shout out to the first responders that got to go do those things and keep their cool you know like i'm sure they talk and joke about it afterwards but they keep their cool while they're freeing somebody naked trapped in a chair, you know, or whatever they're doing, they got to deal with, with crazy things that seem to happen all the time. I'm just saying that like, it's got to, I, I just like, I, I think I uh, admire that, you know, that you guys can keep a cool face, do the job and then go joke about it later. You know what I'm saying? But damn, you know, you, you got to be safe out there too. When you're experimenting and having fun, I, I encourage experimenting and the fun having, but you got to be safe and smart. Think about things. We got the internet. You know what I'm saying? There's engineer shows. Like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you can look how to make things. Or like I said, have an escape plan of some sort. If you're going to do certain things. But like, all right, if we're going to try this, maybe we should be, should be a little prepared and maybe have a little this here. Or maybe put a pillow here. Or maybe I should put a helmet on. You know what I mean? Because you just never know. So there was a new show on NBC coming on and apparently they had to stop all production and pause all kinds of shit because they had to clean and disinfect all kinds of stuff. I don't know what happened over there. People got food poisoning. I don't know what. But apparently people were having like crazy, like like during the show, like people got ill of some sort. I don't know, like I said, if it was from the food or what happened. I don't know if they got ronified. I don't know what happened. You know what I'm saying? But just during the filming of the show, people was freaking out, having to run to Porta Johns. Porta Johns was getting fooled up with everybody on set. So people just started crapping and crazy explosive diarrhea everywhere. Diarrhea Armageddon all over your TV show set on NBC. Yeah, it was like NBC. You know what I'm saying? All over the place. You know what I'm saying? Nuclear blowout shit. That's what NBC stood for on that movie set. So they had to stop all production because people just shit everywhere. And uh, they had to clean and disinfect all kinds of stuff. I don't know if anything made on some slides. Like if there was a dude sliding down a slide and then he shit and the water turned brown. Like when he made it to the bottom of the pool. I don't know what. But it was called like Ultimate Slip and Slide or some shit. The new show. And they had to pause shit for now because uh, people just like fucking exploded out their asses all over this fucking show set. And uh, people couldn't contain it. It was so bad. It was like it was really bad according to this article. That they had to like stop shooting the show, like hold up, you know, this a oh, little rinse and shit ain't gonna be enough right now, especially with, you know, what's going on around here. We gotta clean stuff, we gotta clean stuff properly. And uh, I still don't know what happened. Like if people got food poisoning or what, they just all of a sudden mysteriously became ill, and um, that's what they had to deal with: explosive, uncontrollable diarrhea. And when it happened, it hit everybody like really fast. That's what was so crazy and caused the issues because. These guys, I guess, were doing the show or doing things happen, and they all just, like, ran off the set. Like, people just, like, felt sick so fast. Like, so it hit them so quick, they just, like, started running off the set. Like, running for the fucking Porta Johns. And then when the Porta Johns were full, 
you know, not everybody could get to a bathroom and they're trying to run to different places. They use the bathroom and tried to find the other ones. They didn't, a lot of people didn't make it. And there was some horrible, horrible accidents all over that fucking TV studio, wherever they fucking were shooting it. But apparently it was really bad where they had to like stop production. People were just probably crapped everywhere. And then people probably crapped themselves, right? And when they walked out of the building is probably where they made all the mess. You know what I'm saying? Like where they were leaving the building is probably where they just like trapped with shit everywhere, coming out the jeans or the pant legs or the dresses or whatever. And it was probably a bunch of crazy shit. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. And if you did, I'd appreciate it. Hit me with a like and subscription and turn on your notifications because I'm here twice a week. And with that said, this has been another episode of Meant to Vent. Till next time, humans. See ya. Oh, <laughs>